So in this video, we will learn practical aspects of the antithetic variable method and we will learn how to generate the required samples. So to just recall what we have done, the antithetic variables estimate is like a usual Monte Carlo estimate, but the data are generated in pairs. So here I sum over all pairs. Let's assume n, the sample size is even. And then I need to add both terms for the pair. So I write f of xk and f of xk prime. And the xk and xk prime are generated so that the covariance of f of xk and f of xk prime is negative, as negative as you can make it for every k, but that for different k these pairs are independent of each other and that all xk have the same distribution of x. That is what we need for the method. And in the previous video we have seen how to compute the error. Now, the question is how can we do that at all? If you think about this first, that sounds a bit paradoxical. How can xk and xk prime be negatively correlated but both have the same distribution as x does? But we see in practice that is actually quite easy. So example, if u is standard uniform, so uniform on the interval from 0 to 1, then 1 minus u, where I take the mirror image of u mirrored at the value 1 half, is still contained in the interval 0 0.1. And if u was uniformly distributed, then 1 minus u will also be uniformly distributed. We can see immediately in this case, if u is large, 1 minus u is small, so these will be negatively correlated. And in fact, if you check, the correlation is minus 1, so it's as negative as it gets. And in this case, we can just to do the trivial example, we know expectation of u is uniform on 0 to 1. So the expectation of u we know is the middle. So it's 1 half, middle of the interval. And let's just see in this case the antithetic variable estimate is perfect because the correlation is minus 1. And let me just go back. Our formula for the error says the new error is the old Monte Carlo error times 1 plus correlation. So if the correlation is minus 1, we know the mean squared error must be 0. So how can that be? Zero is surprising for a statistical estimate, but if you plug it in, you see it comes out like that quite nicely. Namely, we get that n antithetic variables is 1 over n, some k from 1 to n over 2, and there is no f, so f is the identity here. I just do expectation of u. So f of xk is just u, and f of xk prime is 1 minus u, and you see the u's cancel. There's nothing random in this estimate, so we get 1 over n, some k from 1 to n over 2, and well, the use cancels, so we have just 1. So we have 1 over n times n over 2 equals 1 half. So in this extreme case, there is literally no error. The antithetic variables estimate for every n, for every even n, is exactly equal to the correct answer. In the general case, we cannot expect to be this good, but that shows quite clearly the idea. The fluctuations cancel, so if u is large, then 1 minus u is small, and here it cancels perfectly, and if it's not so perfect, they still nearly cancel, so let's do another example. Expectation of u squared. We still could work that out analytically, but let's pretend we don't know what it is. Then what would we do? We still do u is standard uniform and u prime is 1 minus u and the antithetic variables estimate is still 1 over n sum j from 1 to n. f of xj is now u prime plus 1 minus u squared plus 1 minus u squared. And we could work this out, but there is no point. These methods are used for use with the computer, so we would put that into the computer. And now the question is, what is the correlation of u squared and 1 minus u squared? And again, you could work that out analytically, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use R and show you how that's done in R. And we can at the same time estimate the correlation so we can see what we get. So let's see how we can do that. Our aim is estimate the expectation of u squared, where u is uniformly distributed on the interval 0 to 1, using an antithetic variables estimate. So first, for comparison, I will quickly do the Monte Carlo estimate. So we pick an n, let's just use a million. Then we generate the u, and our unif generates uniformly distributed random values. On the help page, you can see the minimum is 0 and the maximum is 1 if I don't do anything special. So that's what we need. So I can do mean of u squared to get the estimate. And I can do square root of variance of u squared 
divided by n to get the root mean squared error. Well, I'll store that in variables that we can keep it. The root mean squared error is pretty small. So we know the root mean squared error of a Monte Carlo estimate is the square root of the mean squared error. So we need variance divided by n, that is the mean squared error, and then we take the square root. So what we get is RMSE Monte Carlo is 0 0.00298. We will see that the antithetic variable method can get an even smaller root mean squared error, and let us see how we do that. So first thing we need to generate n over 2 pairs, so let's give that a name m is n over 2, and for each pair we do u is r unif n, and as we just discussed, one way to generate an antithetic pair which often works is to use u prime defined by 1 minus u, and that has the same distribution. Let's just double check if we do a histogram of u, we see that's flat because we took the uniform distribution. If we do the histogram of u prime, that is the mirror image of the original histogram, but since it was flat before, it's flat after, so u and u prime seem to have the same distribution. So now we hope that u squared and u prime squared are negatively correlated, so let's try that. u squared and u prime Squared. And what I'm doing here is I'm computing the sample correlation, so that is not the theoretical correlation, but it is correlation estimated from data. But we have half a million values, so that will be a pretty good estimate. And on the right you see the estimated correlation is minus 0.87. Correlations are in the range from minus 1 to plus 1, so that is close to the minimal value. So that was just for checking. And the antithetic variables estimate is now, let's do that by hand. So we need sum of u squared plus u prime squared, and this sum we need to divide by n. I'm not using mean here because u squared and u prime squared are both half a million elements long, but we added two half a million elements long vectors, so we get a million elements added in total, and we need to divide by a million, and if we had used mean, we would have accidentally divided by only half a million because that's the length of these vectors. Now something went wrong because earlier we got one third and now we got two third. Okay. Let us start over again. For the antithetic variables estimate, we need only m samples, n over 2. So let's first generate these samples. u is r unif m, and now we need to complete the pair, so we need to compute the u prime. And in the scheme we are doing it, they are computed from u, so we do just 1 minus u. And what we then have to do is to compute the antithetic variables estimate, we need the sum over all u squared, that's the f of u, plus u prime squared, that's the f of x prime in our notation, and then divide it by n. And you see what we get, that is close to one third, let's just recall from up here the Monte Carlo estimate, so for the Monte Carlo estimate we got, well, we probably remember from earlier the correct answer is one third, and we got 0 0.3337483, which is very close to the correct answer one third, and also very close to what we just got from the antithetic variable estimate. The interesting question is, do we get a better root mean squared error for the antithetic variables estimate? We know how to get the root mean squared error, so first again that is the square root of the mean squared error, and then what we need is we need the variance of u squared, as before, divided by n times 1 plus the correlation of u squared with u prime squared, and what we get here is RMSEAV is 0 0.0001 something. And for comparison, the value we got earlier for the Monte Carlo estimate was 0 0.0029. So we got better by a factor of approximately 3, which is a good improvement. This finishes the second part of our video about section 3.3.2. And in the last part, we will consider one theoretical result in a bit more detail.